Hey everybody. So I'm going to go over quite a few ways that I'm using ChatGPT to take my Google search ads to the next level. I'm finding this program to be extremely useful and AI in general to be just a game changer in terms of how it's improving my ability to test copy, to try new copy, to really iterate at a much faster level than I was before. You know, I think with any AI platform, it's going to really depend on what you put into it versus what you're going to get out. Um, and so hopefully I can share some of the things that I use and some of the types of prompts that I give ChatGPT to help really understand um, how I can improve a campaign or a given account or a given client that I'm working with and really take it to the next level. So let's get into it. Um, they recently, you know, of course, released ChatGPT4. It may not be recent if you're super within the AI space, but for a lot of the people that are watching this channel, you might be a little bit further behind it. Um, they also, if you are a paid user, um, released uh, browsing and plugins. So, um, you know, in particular, I think browsing is not quite there yet, but I'm going to be doing a video really soon. I'll probably record it right after this about plugins and plugins that I'm using right now for, um, you know, for really anything across advertising. So that's going to be how I use plugins for Google search, how I use plugins for YouTube op ad optimization, how I'm using it for um, high level campaign design, copywriting, landing page optimization, everything. Um, those plugins are being used for that as well. But let's get into this. Um, that all being said, uh, I think that the first thing you should really try to do with GPT is keyword research. So let's say that I am a company that sells, um, yeah, I just got a new patio set. So, uh, you know, I'm a company that sells outdoor furniture. So let's say one of my SKUs is a wicker furniture set and I'm assigned as you know the marketer to um, improve sales of the wicker furniture set because the summer's coming up, people want patio furniture, you know, it just seems like it makes sense. So one thing that I can do is ask GPT-4 to create a keyword um, schema. So they like about it. It's already gonna break things out into branded keywords, product specific keywords, It'll hopefully go into, you know, informational versus transactional, right? Um, and if it doesn't, I'm going to ask it for it. But I like that it's breaking things out in this way because oftentimes, you know, if you're talking to an executive, they're going to want things broken up into different types of markets because a smart executive is going to be asking you, you know, not only to um, buy out your branded share, but they don't want you to just take all the branded share and then report on a good return on investment because you're not probably adding all that much value. But if you incorporate, you know, long tail keywords, if you incorporate the competitor keywords, if you're testing location specific stuff, seasonal stuff, you know, even some of these miscellaneous keywords that people aren't really thinking about, um, these are going to be really potentially useful, right? And so you can then go and expand on any one of these um, pieces of the schema and so we'll just have it expand and then it'll give you a really excellent list of those product specific keywords. And, you know, maybe there's multiple different types of SKUs that we have, you know, uh, Reton Shea's lounge set, a wicker bar set, right? These could be SKUs that are really the same product, but people are describing them in different ways. And, you know, when you're selling uh, a given item, you need to be able to capture all the different types of demand that someone could have for your product, even if the person isn't you know, completely um, set on the exact product that you're selling, you might be able to present it in a certain way where they get convinced and they buy that anyway. So that's really all the game is for keyword optimization. And you know, the chances are if I'm selling a wicker furniture set, some of these keywords are going to be less competitive, some, some are going to be more competitive, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity for me to get a better return on investment. So it's still going to be, be going here, but essentially what I do is I start with a keyword schema a lot of the time, 
um, for what my target area is. I might give it some more context as like what my brand is, um, where we are competitively in the space, what our objective is with the campaign. Like, are we trying to get more market share? Are we trying to create a new market, for example? Are we trying to um, just get really strong return on investment? Are we trying to do more awareness building, right? Um, you know, with search, it's almost always just gonna be ROAS dependent, but you know, the more context that you give it, um, the better of a response it's gonna give. But I love keyword schemas, try that, use that. So we're gonna go into a new chat and we're gonna move on from keywords to another thing that I love to do, which is ad copy testing. So actually we could, we could go back, we could use this furniture example and let's try ads and uh, add headlines or let's, let's you know this is what uh, responsive search ads are. We'll see what it comes up with here. Um, sometimes it has issues with character counts, but it's been getting better, I've noticed. So this would get into um, a couple of different other ways to describe these. But what I'm going to do now, right, it's going to finish this out. And um, this is OK. You know, I could probably take this and get some baseline, um, you know, good results out of this. But I think that what gets interesting is if you ask it around to, to, to really pretend to be someone else. So. I'm gonna ask it a question that it's gonna be a little bit odd until we get back to the ad copy. So tell me about the, or tell me the names of the top 10 copywriters in the last 50 years. Think Apple, Coca-Cola, et cetera. Yeah, so Ogilvy obviously comes up here. Um, and so what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna see if ChatGPT can pretend to be David Ogilvy, but also have you know a really optimized responsive search ad. So I'm gonna stop generating and then I'm gonna have it create the ads again. Create the above. And so his, his are gonna be slightly more about the person and what it's going to um, do to their lives, right? So investing in luxury you deserve, right? Modern, elegant. There's not very many um, characters here. Anyone that's you know, done really good campaigns knows this, but this is uh, something that you can do to explore completely different options that you may not be thinking about. So, you know, honestly, if I was reading something like this, um, it could be really interesting. And so you might want to combine some of these headlines with other frameworks, right, other copy styles. Um, and, and just to, like, compare, you know, something that I will try is I'll have a responsive search ad written in Ogilvy's voice, but then you might also go and take Burnett's voice or Burnbox's voice and then... Um, compare, you know, three different responsive search ads against each other and see which type of voice is fitting your brand or your product or the client that you're working with and even against your own copyright. Um, so yeah, that's something that I really recommend doing. Have it take personas, um, have it um, create, you know, different um, copy angles, really. Um, you know, I think you can, as long as you are being clear about what it is you're selling with Google search, you can still achieve a 10 out of 10 quality score, especially if you're describing the product in such a way where you're just getting a higher CTR than everybody else. If you are creating an ad that everybody wants to click on, um, even if you're not doing things by best practice in terms of, you know, it's not, um, it's not like stuffed with keywords. It's not as, descriptive or clear cut as some of the other ads out there. If you just are converting users at a better rate, if you are offering them a really good experience on the landing page, and if your ads are just getting clicked above the rates that Google would expect, you're still gonna get a 10 out of 10 quality score. So a lot of people get wrapped up with quality score. I mean, I am always shooting for 10 out of 10s. 
but there's different ways to get there, so just remember that. Which would be landing page optimization. So what I think is really interesting about this topic is Say if I was, um, if I just, again, I only have one SKU, right? I have that um, wicker furniture set, but you could describe the wicker furniture set in a few different ways. So I'm going to ask it. So what I want to do here is have it um, pipe out a bunch of different possible URLs or landing pages that I could then send to a web developer to essentially copy um, other pages on my website, and then I would just slightly alter right the keywords. So for those certain search terms that are talking about an outdoor wicker set, I could have the exact same landing page, right? But I just switch out, you know, instead of wicker furniture set, it's an outdoor wicker set, right? Or it's an outdoor wicker furniture set. And the URL slug is outdoor wicker furniture set. Um, if someone's looking for patio furniture, right, that's more specific than an outdoor furniture set. So I want to instead have that landing page be wicker patio furniture or outdoor wicker patio furniture, right? So it gets a little bit tricky, but ultimately, if you're in a position where either you're running a site, maybe you've got like an SEO farm that you're doing affiliate marketing on, maybe you're doing... Um, you know, maybe you're you're selling for a big brand that has a lot of different SKUs that you can potentially optimize and and work with. You know, a, a team and and create a bunch of different landing page for, pages for um, whatever your situation is. Having this sort of a setup combined with um, campaigns that are hitting a lot of different potential customers that are also combined with just really clear keyword targeting. Um, you can end up in a situation where someone that's looking up a, um, you know, a wicker bar set is reading an, um, an ad from you that's about a wicker bar set, and then they're going to a landing page that's about, yeah, you guessed it, a wicker bar set, right? That is the perfect user experience because it's the most specific. I'm going to click on the ad that says wicker bar set, and that speaks to me, you know, nine times out of ten over the you know, over the ad that's more generic and maybe just says wicker furniture set, right? So that's another thing that I always use the AI for. Um, this was something that, you know, if you've been around for a long time, um, customized landing pages, everybody's done it, um, that the, knows their stuff, but it was really kind of a pain in the butt to do. You had to um, sit there and Excel and, you know, use all these formulas to, um, permutate all of these different, uh, permutate and concatenate all of these different um, keywords against landing pages and customize it. And now you can do it with like four or five prompts with ChatGPT. So that's another thing that I do. And this is really one of the best ways to get 10 out of 10 quality scores, assuming that you're locking else, everything else in, like your bids are good, your quality score is good, um, because your CTR is good, your um, expected um, experience on your landing page is good, and you know, you're you got a high relevance on your ad because you're customizing all the copy. If you're locking in all these things, you're going to be in a really good situation. So, highly recommend that. Um, I want to again stress that there's a ton of importance in just ongoing testing and optimization in ad campaigns. That hasn't changed at all, but what this changes is. You know, everybody said test new campaigns, new ads, new copy, like every single day. But who actually did that, right? Nobody has time for that until now. Now I can say, hey, write this in Ogilvy. I go and I copy, right? Copy all of this, throw it into a new RSA, test that. I can go into another campaign tomorrow, write something in Bennett's voice, test that, check the results next week, and I can have experiments going every single day and it takes five minutes. And it's actually different. That's the crazy part. You know, it, I mean, if anyone's been in this situation where you're an advertiser and you have to come up with new ideas every single day, you get to the 10th or the 20th or the 30th day, like I don't care who you are, uh, the ideas aren't gonna be that different. Or, you know, worse, they're gonna be pretty bad ideas. So, 
you know, that, that's really the biggest thing here is you want to make sure that you're iterating on really strong ideas consistently. And ChatGPT can help you do that. But you just want to make sure you're giving it the right prompts. And, you know, hopefully you give these a try. Let me know what kind of prompts you're using for your advertising campaigns. Um, please give us a like and a follow and a sub and a comment and whatever. Help me on the algorithm. Um, you know, the channel's been growing pretty fast, which is great. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm excited to keep making some videos um, and sharing, you know, my knowledge of Google Ads and, and also this new AI landscape.